guys, it's Atron Sobo here. Today, I wanted to talk about my trench. Now, you probably can't see it very well from where you're looking because of the leaves mixing in along with it just being higher and just kind of, <laughs> you know, blending in, but we'll get to that in a bit. First, I want to talk about a brief history of the trench, what a trench is. Now, this in itself, I wouldn't really call a complete trench since it isn't, you know, very deep and it isn't very connected to a lot of other things. It's more of just a position, a dugout position. And now, humans have been using, ah, uh, well, as long as we've been fighting each other, we've been digging holes to hide in, to fight each other from. Now, most people usually start to associate trenches with warfare uh, around World War One, right? Because that's the first really popular and well-known usage of trenches. I mean, the, the amount of trenches that were dug all along the Western Front is just insane. And their horrific um, conditions and their use throughout the war is, you know, what makes, that really brings trench warfare into the public eye. Now, of course, that's not the first use of trenches. Use is of trenches goes back very far and another thing I'm not a historian but what I am is very very passionate about history for really as long as I can remember so remember take this with the, take what I'm saying with the history with a grain of salt I will probably be wrong on some things if I am uh, leave a comment and correct me so anyway um, we know that we we know that trenches were used in medieval times, especially for sieges, to protect against incoming volleys of arrows and other things from uh, whatever you're sieging, and it could also maybe be used in field battles if it was a more stuck, um, stuck in and defensive battle. Who knows? Um, I know there was also extensive use of trenches in the Crimean War in the um, 1800s between the French and the British and the Russians. I know there was extensive use of trenches there. And then also, a war that people don't really talk about or know a lot about, and which is actually very interesting, is the Italo-Turkish War from 1911 to 1912. Now, there was extensive trenches used in the Libyan part of that war. Uh, there was actually the first use of, well, I don't know if it was the first use, but I know there was use of gas weaponry, along with aircraft and armored vehicles. It's really like a prelude of miniature World War I, which is really interesting. And then, of course, World War I trenches were used heavily by both sides, the Allies, well, sorry, the Entente, and the Central Powers. And then World War II. Now, I know the use of trenches in World War II isn't to the same extent as... World War One, especially in the European theater and the Eastern theater, um, but in the desert in North Africa, I do know that it was more prevalent. Uh, trenches were more prevalent there, but not as much in Eastern Europe and Western Europe during World War Two, just because of the nature of war, just because of the nature of how warfare had been changed by Blitzkrieg and stuff like that. Right, the more emphasis on armor. So that's one thing to take into consideration. We've been using the trenches for a long time. And what do they do, right? Well, it's pretty simple. They protect you from whatever's shooting at you and give you a place to shoot back from with relative protection, which is a very, very useful thing to have. Now, there are multiple different kinds of trenches. I mean, it depends on who digs it, really. There's machine gun emplacements, mortar emplacements, just straight lines for infantry, curves. I mean, a trench is really just a deep dugout in the ground for infantry or machine guns or emplacements to take a position and fight the enemy. Now, for airsoft, it's a little bit eh, right? I really built this trench because I wanted to build something like that. Or I wanted to dig something like that and I thought it'd be fun and I didn't have anything to do that day. So I did that. And now for airsoft, it does work. I have bunker down in here and fought people who are coming at me from over there in airsoft and it works relatively well. Of course it's a little bit limited because of the limited range of uh, airsoft guns along with the just closer range of this little playing area right here but still it's fun and it's really cool. 
All right, well, now I think I'm going to go inside. I'm going to show you in there. All right, uh, follow me. All right, well, now we're in the trench. So, first thing, you can see how it's not that deep. It's, it's not really a trench. Now, it is deep enough where I can get down here, and I can be covered from anything that sees me over there. And that's really the important thing. And I did... Yeah, th I like this thing. I like my trench. It was fun to do, and it was fun to build. So let's talk about making it. How did I make it? Well, it's pretty simple. A shovel. I used a shovel. I used a shovel along with a pickaxe for busting up the ground so it's easier to shovel out because it's pretty hard soil here. And occasionally this old woodcutter's axe for chopping out uh, roots and stuff when I couldn't get through it with a shovel. So how'd I do it? It's really simple. Huh. Well, those tools and uh, some time. This took me about a day to do. Um, I dug out this in a day. Now I did the, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some patchwork over there of logs and rocks to form that side of the protection. Um, I did that a different day, but the main digging took me about a day. And all I did was dig out this, this channel, and I got all the dirt up over there. And then along with um, putting any large rocks or root pieces under it just to help prop up the sides, you can see the rocks in here. But um, it's really simple to dig a trench. If you have an entrenching tool, that's really good as well. Those work really well. But I liked using this larger shovel just because it gave me more power and just made it, made it a little bit easier for this larger project. Now, if you had more than one person, you could knock this out pretty easily. Just having one person, it, it, it takes a little bit. But really, it's it's real simple when digging these entrenchments. There's not really a certain way you need to do it. As long as you're digging a hole in the ground and you have protection from where you want there to be protection, you're gonna do it right. And you can stack up pieces of wood. And, if, and since you're doing this for airsoft, right? Right? It doesn't matter if it's, you know, bulletproof. It just has to stop a BB, which dirt and sticks and rocks will do. So that makes it easier. That's really all you have to do, is just dig, move the dirt over, and stack it up, which is pretty simple. And of course, this isn't really a trench trench. It doesn't go super deep in the ground. It doesn't have a long system yet. I do want to expand this and make it more of a system and make like a mortar pit over there, get one of those like little cheap like faux mortars off of Amazon and put it in there because I thought that'd be fun. I do want to build an enclosed like bunker position um, which I think would be also really fun. But yeah, this is a basic rundown of my trench. It's simple, but it's effective and it works. And it's really fun to make. And once you're done making it, not only have you accomplished something, something awesome, right? And you've done something with your own two hands and made something interesting. But now, you have a fighting position. So I plan on making... Um, defenses like this, maybe a series, because I want to build more, and that's great content, and I hope uh, that everybody would like to see that, because I know I would like to watch videos on that. So I think I'm going to try and do like a um, little op like observation post next. I'm going to try and build one of those, and then also there might be more of just building more trench-like things, which, um, yeah, so uh, keep an eye out for more <laughs> emplacement and trench building stuff along with more in the series of militia and guerrilla warfare tactics. I'm going to be doing the third part of that soon. Um, and uh, any other gear that I get my hands on, I'll be doing videos on. Uh, I think that's about all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope, you, uh, hope to see you next time.